Speaking of UConn and Alabama, let's talk a little bit about that matchup because Matt Cox will not be here. We'll talk about So the line is holding at 12 here with a total um, in this instance of 160. So Matt Cox, give me some thoughts here on this specific matchup because this is the final day that you are here with us before that game is played on Saturday. Yeah, I'm going to be a fool here and fade UConn. Um, I'll give you the reasons why first, and then maybe we can be the put on our devil's advocates hat and, and talk me out of it. Maybe I'll do a live button, a buy off of my Alabama play. But I am going to take the tie plus 12 here. <laughs> Um, that would make history just, on the just show. Just losing confidence, if you play, right? Yeah. If you play, and you play it both sides, sure. you can't lose, right? You play both sides, right. you can't if you lose, play right? Play it for sure, and then you live button go against it. I don't know that we've ever had that on the show. I wouldn't advise it uh, going forward. But uh, here's my rationale: the UConn's covered every game by a bajillion points, right? So they've gone, you know, they they, they ran through Illinois, San Diego State, Northwestern, um, and Stetson. Now, the line against Illinois closed around eight, eight and a half, and that was against an Illinois team that was cruising. People thought that was the only team left, maybe outside of Purdue, that could give UConn a run for their money. And then that game was over very quickly in the second half. Now, there was a you know 15-minute stretch there in the first half where Illinois you know kept it close with UConn, right? They played good defense. They kept it low scoring. It was within arm's length. But Illinois just continued to be stubborn and try to attack the rim against Klingon and then interior defense. And that's what really enabled that 30 to zero run uh, UConn just basically you know rejected everything at the rim Klingon being the main uh, fly swatter up there that allowed them to get out in transition and the snowball effect just kind of happened so quickly right like yeah I think you know if you play that over a million times you probably don't see a 30 0 run balloon that big it probably you know stops at 15 2 but but all that said because UConn beat Illinois so badly I, I think you're actually getting an extra point or two of value on Illinois I'm sorry on on Alabama here uh, this line's at 12 Illinois closed at eight. I don't believe that Illinois is four points better than Alabama. Uh, for all of the narratives about Alabama's defense being spotty and all of their inconsistencies, um, I, I do think this Bama defense has played better um, down the stretch. And, and so I'm looking to kind of uh, pounce on a price situation here. Well, I think I'm getting a free bonus point of two, bonus point or two of value. Now, matchup wise, that's the concern. I, I think the way you want to attack UConn is anywhere but at the rim. And Alabama will chuck threes for days. I think that's going to help them at least. You know, with the basic math, three verse two, keep them competitive if they are making shots. Now, the other part of their offense is they do everything at the rim. They don't shoot any mid-rangers under Nate Oates. That's basically his whole uh, analytics money ball strategy. But Nate Oates is a good coach, and I think with the time that he has to prepare, which is a big part of why UConn's been so dominant, especially in these short turnarounds, is they have so many complex sets to prepare for, and they're just such a tough beast to prepared because they're so balanced. But I think Oates simply comes into this with a very different, unique game plan that we can't even – project because we haven't seen it before I, I i just sort more of a gut bet on oats coming to coming to play with something very unique um uh, unlike what we've seen from them so far the other thing here too tj is to put a bow on this is the forwards of bama th there's four that have played really well for the tide all tournament he's got two that can step out and shoot it and bring clinging away to the to the three-point stripe maybe knock down some threes get them uncomfortable they also have some athletic offensive rebounders that can help them steal an extra possession or two throughout the game to keep the possession tug of war equal a lot of things i think add up here for bama keeping it close obviously this could be a complete runaway the other direction i'm going to be laughing at myself next week but again i'm going to trust the price overreaction to the illinois result and the nate oats with time to prepare coming up with a very unique um and a couple of curveballs in their game approach all right so he is going on the record again not uh, with us here uh for the rest of this week corby craig a lot of talk about the number of three-pointers that Alabama will need to make. I've, I've had a couple of analysts on on different shows, et cetera. I'll go ahead and taint it and say that they are saying somewhere around 12 or 13 made threes, that if they can get to 12 or 13 made threes, they stay in the game, they maybe have a chance to win the game. If it's not anything close to that, if it's seven, eight threes made, forget it. They're going to get wiped out. Is it that simple in your mind? What do you think? No, I, I don't, and uh, I really like the the points that Matt makes, and I'll talk about this game on Friday, but um, mm -hmm. I do agree. The The big thing here is we see a UConn team who, as Matt talked about, they had 10 blocks in their last game. This isn't a Bama team you're really going to get blocks on. They don't play that style of offense. They, you're never really going to get an ISO with the rim other than in Grant Nelson, who usually tries to pull it out wide, uh, take an ISO with a guard to the rim. 
they're never really going to just go big on big versus Klingon, which the infamous Illinois coach said, like, we'll let him block 100 shots. Uh, we still think we can get ours. And inevitably, that came to bite him in the butt. Uh, but the, the interesting thing for me here, at least, a few things. I talked about this the other day, but you couldn't just play Northwestern. That line was 11 and a half. Do we think Northwestern and Bama are the same skill level, or do we think UConn deserves to be bought up this much in market at the end of the season? I think we kind of knew how good UConn was at that Northwestern game. So I disagree. I think there's a, a really heavy sentiment on UConn being the best team by a factor of a lot, which they are, but I don't know if they're probably at this point two and a half points better than what we would have projected before the last game. Also, the big thing for me in, in these kind of conference games or tournament games is who did you play the game before and, and could you have learned anything from it? I think it's an interesting spot where Bama played a really good Clemson team who was P.J. Hall. Like the strategy they used for P.J. Hall would be one similar to Klingon. Obviously, Klingon's a better basketball player, but P.J. Hall had five turnovers uh, and fouled out pretty quick in that game. So I think Bama's strategy for P.J. Hall was good. And if they can get Klingon in any foul trouble similar, they could have some success. The first success we've seen in quite some time versus UConn. And you're muted, TJ. Pardon me, Matt Cox will go on the record one final time uh, before he is back uh, on our Monday show for the championship. If he's back for our Monday show on the championship, but final time this week, he will go on the record and he will take Alabama here and the 12 while he can get it. Take the tide plus the 12. Corby's liking that number as well. He won't lock it in today. It may even actually go up a little bit by the time we get to Friday. We shall see on that. One interesting thing, Matt, and that is, and you would be allowed to do this with a live button play, a lot of people are looking at Alabama's team total at 74. If you wanted to play like a team total as another play on this game, I'm thinking that's the number that you look at. It, it is interesting. UConn's team total 86, um, uh, appropriate because they 86 both uh, San Diego State and Illinois in easy games, yeah. metaphorically speaking. That seems a little high. Anything about a team total interest you? Am I trying to go to second play out of you, my friend? Well, no, you, you you usually do, and I usually abstain, so I'll stay to my yeah. uh, my disciplined roots here. Right. here. Here's what has me concerned is uh, I see a few people in the chat mention how well UConn does play in transition, and I think they are willing to play in transition. They're actually they're phenomenal in the open floor. There's really no weakness to this UConn team when you, when you slice and dice it. Um, you could argue maybe on the wing, they're not super athletic, which I think is an area Alabama can exploit. But back to your team total question, UConn's gone under the game total in, I believe, nine of their last 10 games. Their defense has just been that good. Um, the only exception was the St. John's game uh, right before the Marquette game and then Biggie's title game where they gave up 90 to the Johnny. So that was a precedent where I think it could be helter-skelter. We saw the Johnnies compete in that one. We could see Bama replicating that, but... Um, I just don't trust my Bama confidence enough to back Bama and the team total. I'm just too leveraged on Alabama's shot making there. But I do agree with you. I think for them to keep this uh, within 12, they are going to need to surpass that. Uh, I'm just not going to bet both because I think that's just double dipping. Um, and I'll be overly leveraged in one side of the ball, um, with which will be overly relying on, uh, honestly on their ability to knock down shots from the outside. One could also argue, though, you protect yourself. It's insurance. If they don't cover it, but they've scored a bunch and scored a bunch late, you can get home there, I understand. Uh, just looking at their point totals for what it's worth, Alabama played two games in Spokane. They played two games in L.A. The two games in Spokane, they scored 109. And then in that slugfest uh, with Grand Canyon, where they only had 55 points with five minutes to go in the game. They got 17 in the final five minutes to get to 72 points. The two games in L.A., they got to 89 in the win over North Carolina, and they got to 89 again in the game with Clemson. So for what it's worth, in three of the four games, they've easily gotten past 74 points. Then again, those weren't against UConn, against Connecticut, which is the whole point. So... 